Hi guys, it's Sam Varma, and today I'm gonna to take a deep dive into the Shure Plus Motive apps. So in many ways, this is part two of the MV88 Plus review. I'm gonna go into the app in detail and explain all the settings. And hopefully, for the beginners, I'll run through some basic concepts, but the idea is to give you the confidence to know what the tools in there and the settings are doing so that you know what you can expect out of the microphone. And for the professionals, you'll see what you can do inside the app and then what you're gonna to have to do in post later. Sound bounces all around us, so microphones are designed to pick up sounds coming from specific directions. This is the microphone's polar pattern, and when you visualize it, you see that different microphones are good at picking up sounds from different directions. The MV88 contains two separate microphones, each with its own polar pattern. A very common cardioid type mic, which is generally most sensitive to sounds coming from right in front of it, and a slightly less common XY bi-directional mic, which is most sensitive to sounds coming from either side of it. The Motive apps allow you to choose between them or combine them. Understanding the differences in what the polar patterns have to offer and how they behave will be the key to getting the most out of the Motive app microphone combo. Now let's see what happens when we plug it in. The first thing the app does after launching is automatically recognize your Motive product, and it then prompts you to update the firmware if necessary. This was quick and easy and took just a couple of minutes, and you didn't have to create an account or anything like that. Next, the MV88 behaves like an audio interface when it's plugged into the iPad. And you can see this when I pull down the control center, the MV88 Plus is checked as an audio destination. In the top left corner is the settings menu. From here, you can adjust the theme from light to dark, and you can also choose to keep the screen from locking while you're recording using the app. In the top right corner is the screen lock button. This grays out the screen so you can't accidentally change your settings while you're handling your device. Dominating the top of the display here are the level meters, and they're basically just a visual representation of the incoming signal here to the microphone. To make sure you're keeping your audio level in the sweet spot, you can adjust the gain slider. This basically compensates for the volume of the incoming signal. Now, normally you wanna keep it in the green like I am here, occasionally popping up into the yellow, but what you don't want is for it to go into the red. If you do go into the red, you get what we call clipping. Clipping sounds like this. Fortunately, the app has a couple of tools to help you avoid that. The first of which is the limiter. Think of it as your insurance policy. My bass player always says it's the make sure I don't get fired switch. I don't really think you would ever have a reason to turn it off. Underneath the limiter is the compressor. It basically makes sure that the quiet parts are loud enough and that the loud parts don't clip. So between the limiter and the compressor, you have two tools to help you keep your audio volume in the right range. Now, the only thing to know about the compressor is that if you turn it up, you're gonna hear a bit more of the background. So you'll also hear that the quality of my voice changes, but you may also hear more of the room behind me. Next to the gain slider is the monitoring button. When you tap it, another slider reveals itself. This one sets the balance of volume between the microphone and all other sound coming from the iPad. To the left is all mic, to the right is all device. If you use a different app for recording, this also allows you to have latency-free monitoring of the mic signal. Underneath that is the presets bar. For any of you out there who are not very experienced, these are your get out of jail free cards. Just choose the one that best describes your recording situation. Speech, singing, flat, which is just a shortcut to turn everything off, recording an instrument, and loud, like a live show, for instance. As you can see, the presets adjust all the settings in one tap. Once you've chosen a preset, you can modify it and even save it as your own. You can then recall that whenever you want, or you can create your own presets from scratch. Underneath the presets bar is the section where you can choose your microphone setup. You can use each of the microphones individually, and if you want to know what that sounds like, I had examples in the review video. In that video, I also talked about what happens when you combine the two microphones to get the mid-side recording method. The first setting here allows you to do that in real time before you record. This allows you to adjust the width of the stereo field. 
But if you want to do it after you've recorded, you need to go to the very last polar pattern and record using that. Again, for a full discussion of this, see my review video. We've just got a couple things left to look at here at the bottom of the screen. I'll start here with the high pass filter. This removes low frequencies from the signal, which is helpful when there's like wind noise or if you just want to take out um, an air conditioner rumbling in the background, any kind of rumbling that's going on really. And now you'll hear what this sounds like on my voice. You'll hear that a lot of the warmth is left when I turn it up all the way. So use your judgment with that. Underneath that is the left right swap switch. This flips the left and right audio channels so that they're in the right place when you're taking selfie video. And last but not least is the equalizer. This adjusts the sound on the way in. A lot of times you'll do that after the fact, but if you need to do it ahead of time because of environmental conditions, for instance, you can. And just to give you an idea of how drastic this can change the sound, I'm gonna flip around with the sounds here. Moving on now to the recording screen. The first thing you'll notice at the bottom is this blue line here. It's a reminder to turn on do not disturb so that notifications don't interrupt your recording. Now, the pro tip is you can use the shortcuts app in iOS to automatically turn on do not disturb whenever you launch the Motive app. I'm using screen recording on the iPad because once you hit the record button, you can't actually go back and change the settings. Next, let's talk about the sample rates over here. For the pros, you know what this is for. For anybody who doesn't know what this is, leave it at 2448 and you'll be fine. Other than that, on this screen, you've got the level meters across the top. You've got the gain slider just underneath it. And the only other thing of note is once you start recording, you can actually drop markers in, which is helpful for all my podcasters out there. If you want chapter markers or if somebody drops an F-bomb, for instance, you can just drop markers in like this. And they come in handy at the next step, too. Now I'm going to go into the editing screen. So here's my recording. And you can see all the markers that I added right here. I can drag the red transport around. And if I tap on the markers here, I can add another marker there if I like. I can also pull in from the edges and trim it and then save that as a new recording. If I bring it in, you can adjust the volume drops at the beginning and end. And I can also set a loop between the two points if I want to. Start 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 the other thing that the markers are good for is that they will automatically split the recording at those points and save it as four separate audio files. So when I go back, you can see here, I have the original file and I have five separate new files. And I can go to the original file. I can also add my artwork here. And there we are. The last step on our journey is the Shure Plus Motive video app. The first thing you'll see across the top here is this notification reminding you to enable airplane mode or do not disturb so that notifications don't interrupt your audio or your recording. Let's have a look at the interface, starting from the right hand side. At the top here, you have a button that will flip the camera for selfie recording, and underneath that is the microphone button. This will show us the now familiar interface for adjusting all the microphone settings. So everything we talked about up until now is in here. The next column here allows you to choose the format of the audio file that you're going to get, and just below that, the sample rate. Underneath that, your recording resolution. We got 720p, 1080p, and 4K. And then underneath that, you can choose your frame rate between 24, 30, and 60 frames. And then underneath that, you have a grid or a level. Now, touching the screen, you can adjust the focus and exposure. If I swipe up and down on the screen, I can adjust the brightness. And I can also tap and hold to lock the focus and exposure. At the top in the middle is the name of the microphone you've got plugged in, plus the recording time. And then moving on to the left-hand side, at the top you have the settings menu. Underneath that are your level meters, which we talked about. And if I touch those, you can adjust the microphone's gain and the monitor mix. Now you can pinch to zoom and pinch to zoom out. The one thing I would note here is that the app currently doesn't support multi-camera for the three cameras on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, for instance, or maybe the dual cameras on some of the other iOS devices. And then the other big thing is that this app does not have any editing functionality on board. So it saves the video straight to your camera roll. 
Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this, and that's a wrap. So I'm hoping this video helps you understand the possibilities and the limitations of the MV88 Plus and the other Shure mics. For me, this has been a great solution. It's simple, it's easy, it's fast to set up, and it gives me pro results every time. And the tools on board are flexible enough that I can use it in different ways if I want to. Finally, the last thing I want to say is we have to remember that this is an audio product. All of us spend a lot of time looking at sound on screens. These tools have been put in the app to help solve particular problems that you run into in the field, but they're just ways of manipulating the sound. And the idea would be for you to decide how you want to use these tools to get the sound that you have in your imagination. See it with your ears, and remember that there's no rules. If it sounds good, it is good. Thanks for hanging with me, and I'll see you next time.